The following story has been brought to you by storiestoinspire.org. Rebbe Kanieski, all of a sudden, she was famous. That she used to tell people that if you need, if you need a Yeshua, next time you get upset, next time someone says something to you, instead of responding, at that moment, at that moment, don't respond. Hold back and instead turn to Hashem and say, Hashem, God, I didn't respond. I didn't hurt that person back. It was really hard and it is really hard. My blood is boiling and I want to. Utilize that and give me bracha, whatever the person needs. So there was one story that I just read. There was a principal, principal of a school. And there was a certain boy that wasn't allowed into the school. For whatever its reason, totally irrelevant. For good reason, for not good reason. The point of the story is not everyone gets into school. This child did not get into school. And the principal, of course, was the one that had to tell the parents, your child didn't make it into the school. And the parents, of course, were calling and this and that. And the first day of school, the father of the boy that didn't get into this school shows up to school. Okay, so the principal tries to talk to him. No address. Okay, so the principal continues. It's the first day and the principal's going around and he's going to all the different classrooms. And he goes into one class and he's busy in the middle of talking to the class. And in the middle of the class, the Rebbe's there. The principal's there. It's 25 some odd children sitting there. The father of this boy that didn't get in comes barging through, doesn't knock, doesn't wait, opens the door, comes in, and in front of all the children starts screaming at the principal. You're disgusting. How do you not care about another Jew? How do you not let my child? There's no reason he shouldn't get into the school. Screaming and screaming. And the principal just stood there. What's he going to say? And all the kids just stood there. And the father screams and then just storms out. That night, the principal was distraught. He knew he did the right thing by, first of all, not accepting the child. He had spoken to different Rabbanim. And second of all, he, he held his cool. But he was still so upset and he was boiling over. The next morning, he goes to shul. He comes to shul and he meets a friend of his who he knows has not had children for many, many years. And he goes over to that person and he says, I want to give you a bracha. Who are you? Yeah. Okay. I want to give you a bracha. In, in the schos, I didn't respond. I didn't say anything. And I'm not going to say anything. I'm going to keep calm and cool and not respond. He, he was still boiling. It was the next morning. Imagine, you're embarrassed in front of your whole school, 25 kids, in front of everyone who was talking about it. He was so upset. And that schos, and that merit, I want, Mir Tashem, you're going to have a child. And as all the stories end, and of course, eventually, let's start believing them. That man had a child. That man had a child. Because that was the merit for Ace Ladaber, for utilizing our speaking spirit in the appropriate way. There was a boy in my neighborhood. There is a boy. Unfortunately, Rahman al Itzlani has cancer. Baruch Hashem, they're treating him and he's getting better. But as all cancer patients look, he's losing his hair, lost his hair. He's wearing a big yarmulke, a baseball cap. And he comes home, obviously. And on Shabbos, he plays with all the other boys in the neighborhood. Young boy, not bar mitzvah yet. So, you know, they're playing in the park and the candy and the, and the card games and they're running around and they're playing ball and soccer. Like, like boys do and you always look and it's, you always have a little bit, it's like almost a little bit of an ebuch. You see seven, eight healthy boys and then you see the one that unfortunately has no hair and, and we all know and we all hope and we all daven. And one Shabbos afternoon, there was a few new boys in the group. The older boys, not older, but his friends, they know the drill, they know what he's going through, and they have Rachmanas, and they help him, obviously, and they try to make him happy, and they visit him, and they include him, and of course, they don't make fun of him. There was a few new boys in the group, and one of those boys saw, hey, you have no hair, where do your eyebrows go? You're wearing a silly yarmulke, you look funny. He didn't just think that, he said it. He used that speaking spirit, and said it, to this sick child. The sick child could have responded. He's a little boy. He could have started screaming, do you know that I'm sick? He could have started saying, you know what he did? What would we all do, unfortunately, chas v'shalom? What would we say? Would we sit there silent? He, silent, smiling, said nothing. He let the boys continue. They finished, and they went on, and the game continued, or whatever they were doing. And there was a mother standing nearby. 
And the mother afterwards goes over to that boy and says, I don't understand. It didn't hurt you? How did you not say something that was disgusting what they did to you? You could have at least said to them in a nice way even. He smiled and he said, they're little boys. They don't know any better. He's also a little boy. But he grew up. That adversity raised him up. And he's a man. He responded like an adult. He didn't respond. He used that speaking spirit to be silent. Ace Lidaber. There's a time to talk. He did not talk at that moment. How many of us could do that? That's utilizing. Not that we're human beings again. Not that we're a living being. Not that we're a nefesh chaya. We have a neshama that's alive. That's true. But what makes us alive? What makes the difference between the person that is unfortunately six feet under and us who are walking around and speaking is what? The fact that we are speaking. We have that ability to speak and the ability to control our mouths. Enjoyed this story? Come again. Bring a friend. Stories to inspire.org.